picked the wrong weight to quit sniffing glue. Welcome back. Yes, it's Wednesday. It's New Kit Day, and as if the jaunty music at the at the beginning of the video wasn't a big enough clue, we are working on Eagle Five from Spaceballs. I'm going to call this Spaceballs the model making. And uh, yes, this is uh, this is the work of the the one the only Dr. Jeffrey Fink, and uh, this started off as some parts that uh, Jeff was helping my good friend Phil work on with his Phil had a garage kit of Eagle 5 that he got from who knows where and uh, it had some parts that needed replaced or augmented so he contacted Jeffrey and Jeffrey obliged him with some replacement parts well in the in in the midst of all of that Jeff was thinking well I just you know fill in the parts that aren't missing and uh, make a whole kit out of this. So uh, that's where this comes in. Now Jeff and I were had gone back and forth um, with test fittings and prints and you know checking things to see if they were working right, uh, tolerances and things like that. The parts that you see here are not necessarily the same exact parts that you would get from Jeff or Keith if he decides to carry this, which I think he is. Uh, because these are my tests and my test pieces unless there was just something completely flagrantly wrong with them um, I'm using them and uh, I, I'm adapting them I'm sanding them I'm treating them like any other uh, cast resin kit where you have to sand things down and, and clean things up the kit parts that uh, Jeff is making now are actually more refined than this. I just didn't want to go through the, the trouble of reprinting the last version. Like this might be version 3.0 of, uh, of the roof and he may have a, a version 4. Well, I'm not going to go back and reprint this because this is a lot of resin and a lot of time and a lot of printing. And I can make do fixing the little tweak that needs to be fixed on that. So that's you may see parts here that aren't as uh, perfect or as exact as uh, you would get in this kit should you get it. So there, that's my rationale, my rationale for it. And the other thing is the, the nature of this kit or the subject matter of this kit is such that if there's a dent or a ding or something in the print that isn't quite right, I could chalk it off to saying, well, you know, Eagle 5 Lone Star doesn't have a very perfect garage. He doesn't have uh, all of his parts being fixed. So yeah, there's like a little printing ding here. See this little printing ding? I'm going to live with that little printing ding because, hey, it's, you know, it may not be perfect, but it works in the uh, Maison scene, if you will. It works in the, uh, in the flavor of the model. So what we've got here is uh, basically a four-piece shell with a front and a back and we're playing meet the parts uh, this is the Winnebago this is obviously Lone Star's Winnebago and uh, it'll fit together things like this now where my kit or where, where this kit excels that perhaps uh, the kit that Phil made which I think was the golden armor kit uh, does not excel is that this is going to have a full interior and I've got the full I've got the rest of the parts in here to make the full interior. Now this is the sad fact about printing your own resin kit is that you don't get a nice you don't get a nice flashy colorful box that it comes in with you know highly organized sprues and all that. What you get is a handful of parts and if you print them well they come out nice like this. Thing. But you also don't have to do as much cleanup as you would on a poured resin kit. So what we're going to start with is I'm going to start with uh, doing the undercarriage and get, get it up on its wheels and all of that. And then we're going to start building from there. I'm um, also, while that's happening, I'm going to build up the wings. Uh, the wings build up pretty easily. Now this is something that uh, I think I want to light. A simple enough, a simple enough job to light. I'm just going to put some simple 
Ah, uh, there you go. There's your. There's a wing with an engine on it. I'm going to put a simple light in the back of the uh, of the back of the main engines. I'm not going to put the uh, the hyper jets on this because if you look at the movie, the hyper jets are s sit back here. But when you look in the movie, and this panel folds down. They actually cheat that spare tire and make it a picture of the spare tire on the back because that has to like go away so that the bottom can go can fold under the bumper. It doesn't happen in real life. So there'll be no hyper jets on this. I want to try to light the tail lights, the headlights, the uh, engines, and perhaps the wing tips. The wing tips are going to be more problematic because this is a solid piece and I may have to just like hide a wire going out here. Uh, you're also going to see some resin bumps from the printing. Again, this is uh, operator error in my printing setup that, however, I have got my uh, uh, supports set. It's giving me the chicken skin and I can sand enough of that away to make myself happy. But that's also going to be in the underside of the wing, so hopefully less noticeable. One thing you will notice off the top of off the bat, and I can't make any apologies for it, is that when we sit things on the floor, like here's the little banquette that goes, there's the banquette that goes on the floor. If you are trying to make the uh, wall fit, you're going to run into the TARDIS problem, and that is it, it, this uh, uh, Eagle 5 is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside, particularly when it comes to headroom. There is a headroom issue that if you follow the contours of the outside of the uh, Winnebago, the, uh, see, something like this. See this little thing? I can fix that with putty. That's not going to be on the final part, but I don't want to reprint this whole thing just to fix this little bit. I can put some putty in there. But when the ceiling goes in like that, it's barely noticeable and I can fix it real easily. But here is the out outer contours of the Winnebago. Uh, the, the window is that tall. Now, where we run into issue is... Um, in the on the movie set if you were to do this uh, you would not have the headroom that the actors require nor the lighting so uh, what they did is they basically made it a little bit taller on the inside than they did on the outside and you'll notice that when you see the overhead storage bunk uh, containers that go here they really they have them going the full length and you really there's no room above the window for anything like that so as we get into the interior, I'll point that out. It'll become more obvious. So given those restrictions in mind, we're trying to come up with the best of both worlds here. Something that looks like the Winnebago from the outside that has a lot of the same features on the inside, even if we can't fit them all in exactly. So that's our goal. Um, there's no washing of the parts. I washed the parts when I was curing them. So uh, what I would like to do is uh, start painting on this uh, chassis and get the uh, wheels on it and uh, maybe get these engines put together. I have determined, uh, I put these drain holes in when I was printing it and so one of those is going to function for the wire chase. So all I need to do is figure out which one of those it's going to be, drill a hole in here to run the LED and then figure out about the wingtips. So. Uh, off we are into a new galaxy, and uh, I hope you enjoy the ride. Pardon the noise, uh, I'm starting to work on the undercarriage here. I've got both of the, the engine piece and the uh, axle transmission piece uh, glued in, and I am uh, glued, working on the tires. Now, these tires are the same, this is the same file four times, and then there is a center one that, or a uh, plain one that has no hubcap on it. This makes up the dualies that are going in the, in the back and this goes in the front. Now um, I put a brass rod in here, brass tube, in the uh, in this spot and this goes back to my philosophy of using stock parts and not using printed parts when you can get away with it because printing a uh, printing a, uh, uh, a perfect cylinder it's it's uh, it's a waste of time frankly in my book you can get 
brass rod. You, it's a stronger, uh, cheaper solution. Takes less time to walk to the store and buy this and come back than it would be to print one of those. So uh, sp save your printing for the, the things that can't be done any other way. But uh, uh, Jeff has uh, designed this with a the quarter inch uh, hole here made for a quarter inch uh, rod. So that's what this is for. Now that I've got those things set up, I can, uh, I need to put a coat of gray uh, primer on there, slash, you know, that's what the color is going to be underneath. So uh, let's start by putting a gray coat on it, and then we can rest it up and do all of the fun uh, weathering and beading and oil stains and all that kind of stuff. You know, I think I might, I think I might run just some strip pieces here. That would give me the impression of the transmission going all the way back. That's not going to kill him. That's not going to hurt anybody to do that. So I'll go ahead and cut this into pieces. And that way I can scratch build that that rod in there. I know he left it open like this in, so that you can put it on a stand. But I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to display this yet. So uh, And also this is the hatch for the ladder. Uh, it, this is the hatch in the back room. The ladder would come down through here for a barf. Um, so I haven't quite decided how I'm going to display this yet, but I think I'd like to go ahead and put this, uh, transmission, or the, uh, the drive shaft in there. Let's do that first, and then we'll paint it. Alrighty, I'm taking a break in the, or taking advantage of a break in the plotting. Hopefully the plotter will stop making noise any minute now to, uh, catch you up on where I am. I, uh, got the... the two sets of wings together. Now I've put some putty in there to make up for some of the, uh, uh, this was poor printing on my part, on my uh, part, it was not the uh, fault of the file. Oh, that was an alliteration. Poor printing on my part, not the fault of the file. Boy, and pick a peck of pickled peppers while you're at it. And I've got not only the gray on here, but I've put the uh, first coat of the, uh, the under, the under scum the uh, rust and the oil streaking and all that kind of stuff in there and then uh, my goal is to get the the wheels and uh, the axles in today and get a nice rolling chassis on that but that's a good start I can go in here with some high uh, with some dry brushing on the gray and bring some of that back out and then of course we're gonna see some silver highlights but it is the uh, the end it is the undercarriage after all and it doesn't need that much love and I'm also carrying the uh, the scum line uh, along the sides there, so uh, that'll take care of that bit. And uh, yeah, things are moving along pretty pretty quickly. Oh, I also uh, let me go ahead and get this out while we're at it. Started work working on the lighting. This is how the uh, let's see. Let me get it. Get the jumpies on my nerves here. Let me get the bulb lit up. Come on, get the bulb lit. There you go. There's the bulb lit. I swear that is the bulb lit. There, that's the bulb lit. And then it fits in like this and goes into the holder like that just like that so that's one bulb and then the uh, there will be a tiny SMLED that is going to go all the way out here to the wing tip and I'm going to hide that wire I'm just going to run it across the top there and uh, either put a piece of uh, trim over top of it or something to hide it so that uh, you don't see it going into that hole and then I'll putty it up. Uh, the wing is just too thin to drill out so it's just gonna have to go on top. And uh, yeah, it's coming along pretty quickly. Uh, I'm taking my time with it though because I don't want to rush through it. Parts of this are going very well. I have a uh, I have one of these spare banquettes. This is the, uh, the upper banquettes that I printed more than I needed. And the reason I did this is I want to test something. Uh, good friend, Mr. Ken Spriggs, 
uh, has turned the entire world on to the idea of using uh, static grass. He's using static grass on his fly, mo on his fly model and uh, painted it up and it looks like a good hairy fly head. That's tremendous work. Uh, and I want to do something similar to that for the shag rug carpeting. The inside of the uh, Eagle 5 has this groovy 70s shag rug. I swear that was in my house growing up, that shag rug carpeting. It's deep pile shag. And the best way to simulate that, I think, is going to be to flock this and then paint it. Now, they do make a brown flock, so that is plan B. Plan A is to see if I can use the red flocking that I have and paint it. If, uh, if I can paint it a suitable color, then I don't need to go out and buy more, which is, you know, the cheapness in me. Uh, so I'm waiting for this to set up and dry really well. It's supposed to dry, you know, 24 hours, and this is, you know, I did this last night, so it's almost ready to dry out. But I want to uh, see if I can paint that, because if I can get the mottled uh, brown and light brown effect without having to uh, use brown flocking, then I'm all the happier for it. Okay, as I was saying before my battery died, uh, here it is, it's Thursday, it's the gateway to the weekend, and I was grousing to myself about how little I'd gotten done this week, and then I had to hit myself on the side of the head and said, dummy, you've only been working on this for two days. Uh, I didn't start the week this way, but you know, I see Thursday on the calendar and I figure I should be further along. Um, first important test, this is the uh, extra bunket or uh, storage unit that I flocked and I painted to see how that uh, would look and I quite like it. I, it. I think this means I don't have to uh, go out and get any brown flocking. I think I can achieve what I want to achieve with it. This is simply the regular flocking with the uh, uh, sand primer over top of it and then I could touch that uh, with some darker browns to uh, do what I want to do. But uh, here's, here's the kit. Now, as I said, this, it, it suffers from TARDIS syndrome and that is it is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. So there are some things that are just never going to fit. But let's go ahead and pull the, uh, the roof off tear the roof off the sucker and then you can see how all of the interior bits kind of relate to each other now like I said the overhead storage is uh, going to be where it starts to fall down because it's just not as, not as tall inside and you may notice the doorways aren't as big uh, in the kit as they are on the set because obviously on the, on the actual vehicle you have a limited amount of room in the set, you can build it 20% wider and 50% taller if you have to. But it's, this is everything how it's starting to fit in. Now, be prepared. If you've seen the movie, if you've looked at any of the reference pictures, you will know that this is going to be a sea of beige. It is going to be beige on beige on desert yellow with a little bit of buff in the middle. It is tr tremendously drab and boring inside. And it's not helped by the fact that the carpeting pretty much is the same color as the drapes. Yes, the carpeting matches the drapes. Get used to that joke. Um, but it's going to be in the detail work that you're going to see colors like uh, Mog's fire hydrant or the pinball machine or the junk that's on the table. Now, the, the, the seats in the bunk and the banquette and in the uh, cabin are darker brown, and that's going to give us some break from all of the beige. But... Uh, it's going to be a lot of it. And then the outside is a creamy, creamy white. So um, creamy white is it was, was my uh, college rap name, by the way. Um, but this is, uh, it's going to be a lot of the same color. So uh, the job is going to be in trying to make that, uh, the various parts stand out from each other. But I'm also uh, starting to think about running the lights. Now, the, I had said earlier that the ceiling is going to have lights and I might put, a, uh, not a strip of lights, but uh, maybe two or three down the center attached to a battery so that when I pick the whole thing up, uh, the lights will be attached to the ceiling uh, roof section, but then shining down when, uh, when it's in place. And I may make sure that it's like over the, uh, I'll put one up here, 
maybe put one in this area and then one here and then maybe one there so maybe four total and uh, the uh, the utility closet or what I'm calling this back room where the uh, where the ladder chute is that's where all of my ugly wiring is going to go so uh, if I have to sacrifice something it's going to be that back room I'm debating about whether to put the uh, put the curtains up uh, the middle curtains not the curtains over the window the ones that goes in these arches because I think it's just going to close up stuff too much but we'll see we'll see and then we'll know we don't know so we can't see and then you have wings that go on it like that so that's where we are for today um, we'll catch up on a little bit more on this tomorrow morning everybody it's friday it's the last work day of the week it's the last work day on uh the uh equal five here now all of this mess needs to be condensed and out of the way because uh, i need to concentrate on a couple of things and i think today is going to be lighting day i always like ending the week by lighting up something so well i think um i'll pull off all the stuff here that uh doesn't uh, concern me right away and we'll worry about um adding the lights to uh, i mean we're not going to get them on the on the kit obviously but we can get like the the headlights in here and get the tail lights in here and uh the lights in the engines i picked this up yesterday i've never used this before picked this up at michael's light curing resin uh i think what i'm going to do is try to uh like uh you know sink sink a bulb in here and then fill that uh, recess with resin see if I can uh, create the uh, lenses for the headlights and the taillights that way. So um, let's pull off everything that is not in my immediate scope of work. Alrighty friends and neighbors, it's time to start planning the lighting. And um, I want to get these guys in this afternoon, but I want to kind of show you the lay of the land and tell you how what, what I'm thinking. First in the uh, the front uh, I am going to be doing warm white LEDs for the uh, headlights and we're going to put high beams and low beams in and we're also going to be doing orange uh, turn signal lights in the bumper that's for the front chunk the back chunk more simple actually uh, it just gets red brake lights now I know there's an insert in here for the uh, back, reverse lights the backup lights not going to do that. I'm just going to make the red, plain old red, because I'm going to be trying something new. That is, I'm going to be burying an SMLED and then filling in the whole Megillo there with the with the resin and then curing it as we go. So uh, to make one big nice resin block there. So I can't really portion out a spot for the backup lights. Uh, these, uh, strangely enough don't get lit I and mean, they're perfect for lighting but they don't get lit so I'm thinking um, when we're all done maybe I fill the top of those in or fill them in with the resin and just leave them glossy but uh, no lights in there uh, the main engines the main engines I an argument can be made for making those flicker and yellow and I could use the tea lights for that but no I want to use some big old bright five mil um, I think they're I think they're 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 neutral white. They're not cool and they're not uh warm. They're neutral white. So that's what's gonna go in there. And then we're gonna have bright uh cool white strobes. Now, I know in the movie these are more or less constantly on, but I wanna make them strobe because I think the outside of the ship could use a little motion. And I've got these gorgeous uh strobe circuits from Ralph that are do the perfect work, so why not? Uh, I, and I've got all the room in the world to bury the circuit board. So we're going to have strobing light tips here, light tips here, and then just a massive bright 5 mil there. Um, and then that just leaves the interior lighting. And the interior lighting is all going to happen uh, coming down from the inside of the ceiling. We're going to have two over the, uh, uh, in, in the front cabin, one over pilot and co-pilot then we're going to have three of them going down the center to light up the main cabin and that's going to be attached with its own battery so that when I remove the whole top 
uh, it's not wired into anything else. It'll basically be its own circuit, which is nice because that gives me the independent control to turn it off and on, and I don't have to have it on when I have the exterior lights going. So uh, that's the plan. Um, I've got the drill out, I've got the soldering iron warming up, uh, nothing left to it but to uh, start making some holes and raising some resin dust. Alrighty, before I get the wings out and do that last bit of wiring and lighting for the day, I wanted to show you the results of the front. Now, I've got a couple doses of the clear resin in here yet, but it looks like I might have to do one more just to bring it up, because as you as you put the UV light on it, it shrinks down. So uh, let, me, uh, let me get this in camera, make sure everybody's happy here. It's going to be bright. It's going to, you may want to shield your delicate peepers for a second. Um, now I am uh, having to put this just on the bare battery here. But there you go. Uh, there's the headlights and the uh, turn signals. And rather than those being high beams and low beams, it makes more sense if they are combination high beam, low beam, and fog lights. That's what those bottom ones are probably fog lights. It doesn't matter, they're all turned on anyway. But that's the, that's the front panel. So now what I'm gonna do is, is drop in one last dose of these uh, UV, the UV curing resin. And then I'm going to uh, set this in the windowsill to uh, get the natural sunlight on it. Alrighty, I've turned the overhead lights off to make it a little bit more apparent, but here we have the uh, the main engine lights in and the wingtip strobes on. Uh, it's uh, like I said, it's not Canon. Those were those were constantly on, but I like the I like the little bit of animation there. I think that uh, it dresses it up nicely, and these aren't really bright in your face overpowering bulbs and I like that too but uh, yeah this is all set to temporary because I have a bunch of wiring to do to make it permanent did not get to putting the uh, lights in the roof this afternoon everything else kind of took a little longer than I anticipated so let me go get the front panel and the back panel and we'll put them all together the tail lights and ooh pappy those are bright Yowza. Yeah, I'm going to be painting some clear over that to hopefully to cover some of that up. But uh, those came out really bright. That's just the red SMLED, uh, chip size SMLED, and uh, that's what happens to them. You put 9 volts through it and they come out bright. So let me go get the, uh, the front panel. And here are the headlights. Those are bright too. Headlights and uh, turn signals. That'll light up your way, I tell you. It's going to be ironic, but I think the, the weakest lights in the entire setup are going to be the main engines. That's just how it's going to turn out. That's some bright stuff. It's got the bright stuff, baby. Yeah, you can pick it right down on it. You can see the orange bulbs. But yeah. Not going to miss her in a crowded parking lot. And that's going to do it for the first week uh, slash first three days of the Eagle 5 kit. Uh, like, I, like I said, I was uh, realizing I hadn't done a lot and then, hey, I'm only, but i not been working on it for a full week yet. So uh, one important thing is going to happen this weekend. I will take still pictures of it or I'll pick, maybe shoot a little video of it. And that is I am going to be flocking the floor on the interior and the reason I want to do that over the weekend is I want to give that thing like a couple of days to dry and I just can't be without it for a couple of days next week I want to hit the ground running on Monday and show you what it looks like you know being painted uh, but in order to do that I've got to like put it down tomorrow and let it dry over Saturday and Sunday and uh, be ready to have it ready to work on Monday so that's kicking around in the back of my mind for this weekend. But other than that, I'd say this is coming along pretty quickly. Uh, it's been a lot of fun so far, but we'll get into, once we get into the minutia and the uh, land of beige, <laughs> it's gonna be, like I said, beige walls with desert yellow details and, and chocolate brown seats and uh, 
um, rubber black around the uh, window uh, uh, window screens. So until next week, well, we'll be right back at this. Y'all be good, be safe, be smart, be nice to each other, and we'll be, be back here next week. You listen. On this ship, you're to refer to me as idiot, not you, Captain.